gang, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you another must-have electronic device for auto mechanics, electricians, plumbers, home inspectors, as well as many others. This device has many great features, works extremely well, and the best part of all, it's highly affordable. Just like my other videos, a link has been placed in the video description area along with a money-saving coupon code. Any purchases made will help support my channel. I also placed the second link in the video description area for those of you looking for even lower priced units than the one that you see right here. Keep in mind some of those lower priced units will be lacking certain features. What this device is, is a borescope. Now over here you can see a coil around 5 meters, a little over 15 feet long. And it's very flexible. It'll hold the position that you want it to be in. And over here on the very end, you can see it's only about 8 millimeters in diameter. It's extremely small, small enough that you can slide this inside the spark plug hole of your engine. And when it's connected up with this connector here to the control unit, you'll be able to see the piston. You'll be able to see the cylinder walls. And if you take this little gadget, these adapters that go on, you can see there's a 90 degree mirror right there. And what that does, it screws on the end right here and allows you to look at a 90 degree angle. So when you insert this into the spark plug hole, not only will you be able to see the cylinder walls, but if you angle this slightly, you'll also be able to see the valves. Super useful. If you feel there's a problem with your vehicle's exhaust system, you want to look for a blockage in one of your catalytic converters, you can take out an oxygen sensor and using this right here, you'll be able to look at the condition of that catalytic converter. On the very end of the camera, right over here, there happens to be six adjustable LED lights that run around the perimeter and in the very middle is where the camera is. The lights are fully adjustable from dim to very bright, allowing you to see very clearly inside that engine or exhaust system. Now the entire camera cable assembly is IP67 rated, which means this could be submerged up to a half an hour in one meter of water, which is just over three feet. This unit here is basically water resistant. So if you're outside and it starts to rain on this, you shouldn't have any problem. Right over here, this plug covers up the reset button in the event the unit starts acting up for some reason. You can reset it. The USB connection, this cable will plug into. Here's the other end, the small one. And over here is your SD micro or TF card, and you can use up to a 64 gig card. This unit will allow you to not only record pictures, but you can record video as well. The resolution of the display is 1080p. You also have the ability to have 360 degree image rotation. So if you insert the camera, and the image is upside down, you can flip it over here with one of these buttons, which I'll show you in a minute. If you're looking at it backwards, you can also do a mirror, which will allow you to flip it from left to right. Camera view angle is right around 70 degrees, coming off of that tip. The focal length of the camera is 4 centimeters all the way up to 500 centimeters. And the unit can be used in eight different languages. Now if you look right over here, the top of the unit has a built-in LED flashlight. So if you're working in an area that's very dark, you can illuminate that work area to make it easier for you. So when the unit is up and running, you would simply push this button, turn them on, and turn them off. It fits very nicely in your hand. Everything's right at your finger. Here's a look at the back side of the unit. And it says LCD, handheld digital endoscope, and it says Inkscam 113 is the model. Input is 5 volts, 1 amp. That's the charging for the USB. And right over here, not for medical use. So that means do not plan on giving yourself a colonoscopy with one of these units. <laughs> the power supply for this unit is a 18650 lithium ion cell. You push this button and slide it down. And the battery's right behind here. Just locks back. And to remove this, the only thing, this is a very snug fit. So you're going to want to get something pointy to pry this off. 
which I just did with my fingernail. Wait, do it again. Pop it off. There it goes. There it goes. And that's a good thing actually because you want this to be rain resistant. Right over here, you can see the SD card. This is your charge indicator. You plug this in with the USB. Red light goes on. Fully charged. The light goes off. And the reset button off to the left. Push this all the way down tight till it locks in. And if it gets rained on, it will not find its way in, causing any damage. Connecting the cable to the control unit is very simple. On this area here, there's a red dot. You can see it right there. You're going to make sure that that red dot lines up with this little groove on the side of the connector. And you can see it right where my fingernail is. Place that groove in the same position with the red dot. Push it in and then you tighten this down till it's secure. Now there's three different tips that you can use and you also have a protective cap. So to change them you hold here and just unscrew. It's a fine thread. Definitely make sure that cap is in place when using the camera because if you don't use it, you're going to damage these threads, making it very difficult or impossible to screw on the other adapters. Now with the cap removed, you can use a neodymium magnet. You can see it right there. So this, with thread right on. Now of course, you're going to lose your field of view. But you'll still be able to see, because the camera angle does fan out, so you'll see around that magnet, but you'll be able to get close enough to a metallic object in order to latch onto it and then retrieve it. Now let me show you the other tip. Let's unscrew this. And that is a hook. So you can thread the hook on. Just make sure it's tight and securely. With that hook on the end, you'll be able to see around it with the camera, and you'll be able to hook onto a wire or something else. So you can pull back on this cable and retrieve the wire. Let's unscrew this one. And my favorite is going to be the 90 degree mirror. You're going to thread that one on. Okay, now when this is inserted into an engine, especially a spark plug hole, you'll be able to inspect the cylinder walls and the valves. Okay, let me connect this up to the control unit and show you how it works. Simply insert, tighten the ring securely. Okay, with this carefully positioned to avoid glare on the surface, let's push this and turn it on. You push and hold. Let go. It's going to boot up. And I have the camera on a picture on the wall, painting. Over here is your battery charge indicator. Next to that indicates if the lights are on on the camera, and they are. And there's a date and time stamp, which I don't have set. Now, if you wanted to take a picture, you would push this button once quickly, and it's been saved. If you want to do a video, you would push and hold, and right now you are recording video to that SD card. Push it again to stop. Now if you want to look at this right side up, these two buttons here are what change the angle of the picture. Now it's right side up. And if you want to switch from left to right, so move this to there and that to there, push this. And you can see it flip that. Very easy to use. Just adjust your lights. Now I'm going to push this one here. And you can hit OK. And you can choose VGA 720. I leave it on 1080. Hit OK. Scroll down to date and time. Hit OK. And then you can adjust the date if you want. And let's go back. There's your date stamp. It's on and off, you can set it. 
Here's your brightness. It's on 100%. Not necessary. Save some battery. Set it for 75. Format your card. And over here it says space. What is that? That's how much is remaining on my 16 gig card. Language. I think there's eight to choose from. Yep, there's a whole bunch of them. Put that back to English. And you can return everything to default settings if you had to. That shows the version. September 25th of 2018. And that is it. And this is what the light looks like. Push the button once. Nice and bright. Off. Now there's one thing I forgot to mention earlier. This cable is strictly for charging the internal 18650 lithium ion battery plugged in over here. It does not allow you to access the memory card that is plugged into the unit. You're going to have to use a reader like you see right here. Just take the card out, pop it in. These are very cheap, a couple of bucks. Or your computer may even have a slot for the micro card. Now to get to the images that I took a minute ago or the video, you're going to push right here. Then you can hit OK. And there's the video, MOV, and SSJPEG. You can push up and down to change the one you want, either one. Hit OK. There's the video you have saved. Zero, you push OK to play. And you push OK to stop. Exit out. Want to look at the image? Hit that, hit OK. And there's your image. Okay, I removed the spark plug from the engine. We're going to slide the scope down into the cylinder. Take a look at the threads as well as the top of the piston. Then I'm going to install the 90 degree mirror on the camera end. Slide it back down into the engine. Take a closer look at the threads where the spark plug goes in. And also to take a look at the valves. Okay, we're going to pull the camera out now. And I'm going to switch to the 90 degree mirror. Okay, 90 degree mirror is attached. You can see the threads. And there's one of the valves in the closed position. You can see the edge of the valve clearly. Let's see if we can find the other valves. There's four. And there's one next to it. Also in the closed position. Directly opposite those two are another set of two valves. Okay, this is a look inside of a muffler. You can see all the openings in the muffler that the sound gets trapped in. And at the very end of this muffler, it's not a straight through type. It has a 90 degree turn before it connects up to the exhaust system heading towards the catalytic converter. And I'm taking the camera back out. Now I'm inserting the camera into my vehicle's air vent. I want to show you the door that opens and closes. Sometimes you can have a problem where the door does not open and close properly, allowing you to change the by level from the top of the dash to the bottom by your feet. And there's a little door. You're going to see that right here. And we're going to insert the camera beyond that door into the opening at the bottom. And that's where the evaporator would be located into the right. And you can see it's a little dark in here, and that's because black plastic does not reflect light too well. But when the camera gets close enough to the plastic, you can see everything very clearly.